Armada Kickoff is brought to you by Community First Credit Union, Winn-Dixie, Baptist Health, Bowden Eye and Associates, Brumos Automotive, and Coastal Spine and Pain Center. Hello and welcome into Armada Kickoff. The first phase of the preseason is now complete for the Armada, who have finished off three matches against MLS opposition. Now they move to the next phase, which includes two games each against NASL, USL, and college teams. We'll have the highlights of Saturday night's breathtaking match against the New York Red Bulls and a look ahead to what's next for Tony Miola's team. We also introduce you to one Armada team member who almost gave up his soccer career. Plus Bob Veal and Bob's boot room, David Hayes and Mauricio Ruiz join us on the Analyst Roundtable. We'll get their thoughts on the team so far. But let's start with the final MLS preseason matchup of the year. After wins over MLS teams Philadelphia and Orlando City, the Armada faced their stiffest test for the preseason against last season's Supporter Shield winners, the New York Red Bulls. We knew this could be an explosive contest and we were not disappointed. A lot of families at this one, even in Section 904 and outside of Section 904. Good for young and old, even for the young squid faces, ready to watch the Armada take on the New York Red Bulls, looking for a third victory over an MLS side on the season. Seventh minute, Armada on the attack. Keita sets up Meshach Jerome, who's been playing a very advanced midfield position in this game. Goes just wide. 16th minute now, Matt Fondi on the move. Fondi finds Keita. Look at Keita with his open space. He blasts one, blocked out in front, but the Armada continued to advance. They were really pushing the issue in the opening 25 minutes. 21st minute, Meshach Jerome almost got it. Rebound, Fondi had a chance, and it went just wide. Armada continued to push a minute later. Keita had an open net, put too much on it, elevated it too much. Those were two very good scoring chances for the Armada here in the early stages. Might have changed the way the game felt in the early going. Now, 24th minute, this was an opportunity for New York Red Bulls. Gonzalo Verón, the Argentinian, gets in behind the defense and sneaks it by Miguel Gallardo to make it a 1-0 Red Bulls lead. A couple of minutes later, they're at it again. But what Beto Navarro got back defensively, covering up, takes it off the line, that sets up a corner. On the ensuing corner, though, everybody just flat misses. And it comes to Gideon Ba. Take a look at it again. Ball just comes right through, and Ba, the only one who could get to it. Second half now, 60th minute. Gonzalo Verón again. He is one of the designated players for the Red Bulls, and he's showing why here. Look at Verón. Nice little touch, and then puts it in the side of the net. It is a two-goal game for Verone, 3-0 Red Bulls at that point. Off the restart, Bradley Wright Phillips gives Verone a chance for a hat trick, and he would deliver 4-0 Red Bulls at that point. They would make it 5-0 as Mike Grella got to the ball at the byline. Bradley Wright Phillips shot blocked out in front, but Brian Davis makes it 5-0 Red Bulls. Just a moment later, though, a little something for the Armada to take away from this one. Late in the contest, 84th minute, and the ball will find the right foot of Charles Olandu, and just as he did against Philadelphia, he scores in the closing 10 minutes against an MLS side. Armada lose it 5-1, but had a lot to learn from this one. You know, we attacked very well. We had our op uh, opportunities. You know, it could have gone a totally different way if we put away our chances at the beginning, but... You know, Red Bull is a very good team going forward. They move the ball very well. Uh, they, they attacked us very quickly, but, you know, it could have been a different game if we put our chances away. 5-1 is something never to be proud of, so we're definitely not happy about that, but there were some good moments on, and during the game for us, and we, had a, we created a whole lot of chances, you know, and I think the game could have gone either way. I think maybe that could have been our scoreline had we limited their chances a little better. And we take a look at the stats here. Uh, some pretty remarkable numbers equal shots and the Armada actually had the edge in terms of shots on goal out of those 14 shots 10 of them came in the first half six of the eight shots on goal came in the first half the Armada really that first half hour really outplayed Red Bulls New York happened to get the first goal and then really kind of snowballed from there possession pretty even the Armada had the edge in the first half as well there were a lot of positives maybe not necessarily what a 5-1 scoreline would typically show you but the Armada We'll certainly learn a lot from that matchup against one of the best teams in the MLS. Although the result wasn't quite what the Armada wanted to see on Saturday, it was still a good matchup against their MLS opponent, the New York Red Bulls. And the score could have been much higher if not for the Farah and Farah man of the match, as well as captain center back Beto Navarro. 
Throughout the night, the Armada was tested on both ends, forcing several opportunities that included a shot that was denied by defender Navarro. Midway through the first half, Red Bull's Bradley Wright Phillips slipped past Miguel Gallardo for what seemed to be the go-ahead goal. However, giving chase was Navarro, who at full speed made a sliding block and prevented another goal for the Red Bulls. Players that you can switch around and we're going to be very strong. We saw a lot of different players, a lot of different lineups. All right, first installment of the Analyst Roundtable presented by Subway, joined by Mauricio Ruiz and David Hayes. Okay, guys, uh, first game out, um, first loss of the preseason for the Armada. How do you evaluate, David, how the Armada played against New York Red Bulls? I think in the first half, the first 25, 30 minutes, I thought we did well. We didn't finish our chances, um, which obviously crushed us at the, at the end because the Red Bull, you know, we were playing a top MLS team, not a, you know, end of the bottom of the barrel. But so the first 25 minutes were good. They're a little bit further off than we are. We're still in preseason, so you know I'm fine with the result. Um, you know because you know I think we're going to grow from it. Yeah, and I, I think we're still very much what you said. It's a trial and error, you know, era for us still, where the Red Bulls are pretty much they're a week away from starting from starting the MLS league, so they have to go with their guys and who you know who who, who they trust. Um, and I think it's important not to get too high on some of the positives, you know, from the Orlando City to Philadelphia. You know, I think those are good, but not to get too low on some of the negatives either. It's still preseason. Well, speaking of one of the highs from Philadelphia and from Red Bulls, Charles Alondu yeah. scoring in the final 10 minutes for the second time in the preseason. What do you make of this young 21-year-old from Cameroon scoring a couple of times? I think he's, I think he's fighting you know, like everyone else. He's, he's making a statement for himself, and it's great for the coach to have someone coming off the bench that can give a spark, but I don't think Charles looks at himself as a guy that wants to come off the bench, so I think he's making, he's making an argument for it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, he's come off the bench. He scored some great goals. Yeah. I'd like to see how he does and responds when he starts. Right. So that's my, that would be my question mark. And we'll see if he gets that opportunity here in the next five weeks before the regular season yeah. gets going. David Hayes, Mauricio Ruiz, thanks so much. More for you guys coming up in just a bit. During Saturday night's game, we continue to see Tony Miola tinkering with the formation and where the players fit in. It's all part of the learning process in the preseason. One interesting twist was seeing center back Meshach Jerome playing as an attacking midfielder. I asked Miola about that approach in this week's Coach's Corner. Meshach was our number eight this week. Yeah. This week, and he was uh, he had a different way of playing than Pekka would play, for instance, in that role, or Lucas Scaglia would play in that role. And the idea was to have some athleticism in the middle of the field. And I thought he was one of our bright spots the entire game. What it also allowed us to do was get him closer to the goal and facing the goal, because in our field, as short as it is, you know, when you cross midfield, when, when you're Meshach, you start thinking about shooting. You know, and that's that's not really an exaggeration. I mean, we had him in positions. Um, to do that. So I thought he was excellent. It's not a role that he's familiar with. He's played as a number six with the national team, uh, but but with his talent, I think he can do it. So I, how far off are you from feeling comfortable with this is the formation, this is how guys, I mean, you still have some time to, to process this in the kind of laboratory. Yeah, yeah um, you know, I think our formation throughout the year will, will really depend on who's available that week to us, you know, and, and what personnel we have. Um, I'm, I'm starting to get an idea, but I'm getting more of an idea about the qualities of the individuals more so than what the actual formation will be. I don't see us changing all that much during the season, um, but it's, it's tweaks here or there. Look, if you draw it up on the board, a 4-3-3 could look like a 4-5-1 if you put them in different, you know, move them two steps here, two steps there. But I tell the guys all the time, um, for me, it's not really about what, what the numbers are. You know, is it a 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2? It's about making good soccer decisions all over the field. Hanging up the cleats is not always easy for a soccer player. Here's a prime example. Armada newcomer Patrick Otter. Ashley Bullington has the story. Patrick Otter making his first start in an Armada kit. A surreal night for Patrick Otter suiting up to play one of the best MLS teams in the country. A moment that three years ago he would have told you would never happen after two tough knee injuries playing this game since I can remember so you know a lot of pounding for my whole life uh, kind of catches up with you. Otter started his career at 16 in the Middlesbrough FC Academy in England then in 2011 found his way into the NASL with the Fort Lauderdale Strikers where he helped lead the team to the championship final before injury took him on a detour that almost had him hang up his cleats for good. I mean, you, you realize how much you love the game as soon as you step away from it, it you, you need it again. Um, you know, I tried to get away from it, but it's impossible. I uh, love the game too much, and, you know, I found my way right back into it again. <laughs> 
That love for soccer is what helped Pat overcome the wear and tear on his body and strap up his boots once again. With some help from assistant coach Jim Rooney, he found his way to the Armada. He brought me over here, um, which I'll always appreciate, you know, given the opportunity, but he left it up to me as soon as I stepped in. I had to make a name for myself again, you know, after leaving Fort Lauderdale and having been in the game for three years, you know, basically starting over again. <laughs> Starting over as a trialist was not the easiest task for Otter, but in the end, fulfilling. Not only did he earn a spot on the roster with the team, but also got the start against the toughest challenge they would face in preseason, the New York Red Bulls, a moment Pat will never forget. Stepping out with those you know, MLS players and you know, being in front of so many fans, so many screaming fans uh, that the Armada have, you know, it was fantastic. I mean, like I said, it was surreal. It was, um, it's certainly a moment that I will remember for the rest of my life. Earlier today, the guys played the Tulsa Roughnecks, and they have another USL opponent on Saturday. The Charleston Battery and Armada kick off at Patton Park at 1230. Even more preseason friendlies coming to you in March. There's still time to purchase season tickets for the NASL regular season. Packages start at just $10 a match. Call 844-2-ARMADA or go to armadafc.com to purchase. Straight ahead, how other teams have been faring in the NESL will take you around the league in the preseason. We also head into Bob's boot room with Bob Field to see how aggressive the Armada attack really was on Saturday. Stick around, more Armada kickoff is straight ahead. To enter for your chance to participate in the Winn-Dixie Bubble Battle, visit your nearest Winn-Dixie in your Armada gear, take a selfie, and post it to any of the Armada social media using the hashtag WinDixieBB. Two winners will be selected every Wednesday during a home match week. Assemble a team of three, and you're ready for battle. The Armada weren't the only NASL club to take on an MLS side this past week. Let's take a closer look as we go around the NASL. It's presented by Nike. Let's start with Minnesota United playing in Portland against Vancouver. The Whitecaps jumped out to a 3-0 lead before Damian Lowe put the loons on the board. Vancouver, though, wins it 3-1. New York Cosmos facing the San Jose Earthquakes of the MLS. Only one goal in this one. It's Clarence Goodson of the Quakes with a winner. 1-0 San Jose on top. Tampa Bay and Montreal in another NASL versus MLS contest. This one would end 0-0 in the Suncoast Invitational. Next up for the Rowdies, a trip to England to face Leicester City. Nottingham Forest and Knotts County. Elsewhere, Carolina handled UNC Wilmington 4-0, while Rio OKC drew even with San Antonio 1-1. Hey, take a look at the preseason schedule coming up here for NASL sides. Uh, tomorrow, Indy 11 will take on Arizona United, a USL side. Carolina Railhawks taking on North Carolina State. This is sort of the trend here. You'll see teams in the USL and college teams playing against the NASL teams in the preseason because after this, well, the MLS season gets started, so they've got to find somebody to play. There will be a few NASL versus NASL preseason matches as well, including the Armada will play both Miami FC and Rio OKC. Now let's head to Bob's Boot Room, presented by Collaboration Solutions and Clear Touch. Here are Bob Veal and Ashley Bullington. Thanks, Cole. Bob, the first 20 minutes of Saturday night's game were fantastic. What did you see on the attacking end? I've got one or two clips, and one of the things that I want to point out, look at this guy playing in midfield. Meshach Jerome, way in midfield, high in the field. Now let's look at uh, the first clip. And here, the ball comes out to the side, Bur Brian Burke's caught out, but that Argentinian was very good there. Let's stop it there because he gets the cross in here and you watch what happens when this ball is crossed in across everybody. For us, it's a long ball, so that's good. And then look, let's watch the play from there and see what happens. What I want you to watch here is that little move by Sandoval here flicks it on for Pascal to run onto. Great move from the young guy. 
and you'll see what it does. It springs an attack, and what does Sandoval do? Sandoval moves up the field here. He takes the shot, and the, the uh, play breaks down. Let's look at the next clap. This is playing from the back. Miguel Gajardo plays it out. Great little header there. And a great turn from Matt Ryan. Super through ball out to Sandoval, who takes it inside and shoots over the top. But wonderful transition there from defense, from the goalkeeper, through to the attack. You can definitely tell the difference between the team in the first 20 minutes and the rest of the game. They were just strong and attacking aggressive. Without a doubt. And I love Meshach Jerome playing in midfield. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Cole, back to you. Thanks, Ashley. Straight ahead, David Hayes and Mauricio Ruiz rejoin us as we size up the NASL and take a closer look at Saturday's match with New York. Remember, take pictures with Armada gear or at Armada events, post it to social media with the hashtag Armada Selfie. Your photo could appear on the show. Stick around. More Armada kickoff is straight ahead. A new chance to come out and see the Armada for a great price is with our four-pack attack. This is any four games of your choice and $20 worth of crew cash to spend at your convenience. And for a limited time, we're offering a bonus ticket to the Armada's home opener on April 15th against NASL opponent Miami FC. $110 value starting at just $68. To get the four-pack attack, call 844-2-ARMADA or go to armadafc.com. The Armada Social Rewards Program is a fantastic way to get connected with the team and win Armada prizes. Anything from tickets, exclusive interactions with players and coaches, and even an all-inclusive trip to an away game with the team. All you have to do is log on to armadasocialrewards.com, create an account, link your social media accounts, and start earning tokens. Each week here on Armada Kickoff, we pick one random winner. This week's Social Rewards winner is Courtney Money. You've won two tickets to the Armada's home opener on April 15th against Miami FC. Now, let's head over to the Analyst Roundtable presented by Subway. Cole? All right, thank you, Ashley. Back here on the Analyst Roundtable, we've got Mauricio Ruiz and David Hayes. All right, no more MLS teams on the schedule. Uh, what does that mean for the rest of the preseason? No, I don't think it changes because there's still some really good opponents on the schedule. You know, you got some USL teams, NSL teams, some college teams you still to play. So I think it's still very much an experimental phase and trying to see now what, who, who your lineup is going to be. But I don't think the opponent really, you know, really matters here. One of those college teams I think you know something about. <laughs> They're coming your, up. Your, your yeah, Dolphins yeah, coming we're, getting up. Ready, we're getting ready for we'll it. We'll do an expose That's in advance right. of that match. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think it changes anything. I'm with Maurice here. I mean, uh, I, I, for me, you just you're trying to get somewhere, and there, and you know, each time you step on the field, you're trying to evaluate and assess who you have, who we, who, what the identity, who we are. Right. Um, so, I think nothing changes. All right, we talked about it a little bit earlier uh, with Tony Miola, Mishak Jerome playing as an attacking midfielder against New York Red Bulls. David, what do you think? I think he did all right. You know, I mean, he's always a threat coming out, and his shot is is ridiculous. Um, you know, and I think he picks and chooses uh, great spots to get in. So I think it was all right, but I still uh, want to see how we respond defensively. So I think with him out, who's going to step up? I, th I think it's part of the process, right? You know, figuring out who your back line is going to be. Are we going to play with three in the back? Then we need him back there. If we're going to play with two, okay, then we have some options. But he just brings such a presence, physical presence into the middle. Uh, he's got the ability to, to shoot from distance. Maybe the game changes and you, and, you, and you install him in the middle. I think that's a possibility. Now, we don't often step into the world of design and logos, but... Let's take a look. I want to show you the U.S. soccer logo. Guys, what do you think? You like the, the new look for U.S. soccer? Get the USA in there? Oh, I, th I think it's all right. I think, I think you know, we, people probably make too, you know, too, too big of a deal out of an mm -hmm. yeah. image that within another month no one's going to be talking about it. But it's nice to have the USA logo. And I think the, the, the Basketball Federation went to that a couple years ago as well. They're just nice and big mm -hmm. USA on it. Uh, the stripes are nice, but I, mean, I think it's nice. I don't, I don't think Respecting too much of it. Respecting the past and representing the future, yeah. you know, I mean, that, that's Absolutely. what it's about. Yeah. I think it's all right, and I, I love the fact that they went from U.S. to USA. I, I agree. That, I guess I like the big that. thing, like that's that. the chant. USA, USA. Yeah. Great to have it there on the shield. David Hayes, Mauricio Ruiz, thanks so much. Coming up, a closer look at the Armada's next opponent, a USL club that gave Jacksonville fits last preseason. Stick around. More Armada kickoff is straight ahead.
Saturday, the Armada will host the Charleston Battery of the USL. Last year, the Battery beat up the Armada in two preseason matches, including a 2-0 win at Community First Park. Last season, the Battery finished third in the USL's Eastern Division, advanced to the conference semifinals, and a U.S. Open Cup, lost to Orlando City on PK's 8-7. They were once affiliated with the Houston Dynamo, but no longer. This will be the third all-time meeting between the Armada and the Battery. All have come in the preseason. Another great opportunity for fans to get out to Community First Park at a great price is with our Kraken Pack. Buying this pack gets you eight Armada games, including the season opener in Community First Park against Miami FC and a match against new NASL opponent Rio OKC. There are two bundles of games to choose from, both just $88. So release your Kraken and join the fleet by calling 844-2-ARMADA or going to armadafc.com. Remember, Saturday, a great chance for you to see the Armada play for free, 1230 at Patton Park against the Charleston Battery. And you can always get the latest on the Armada online at armadafc.com. On radio, the Armada Soccer Show is Wednesday nights at 6 on Sports Radio 930. And Armada kickoff every Thursday night right here, 10 o'clock on CW17. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Cole Pepper. And I'm Ashley Bullington. We don't have the Armada Selfie Montage this week, but don't forget to hashtag your pictures on social media with the hashtag Armada Selfie, and yours can make it on the show next week. Tonight, we leave you with highlights from today's match against the Tulsa Roughnecks.